time to finish the tree. Currently, the end of each branching level looks a bit strange, especially the trunk, because the split of each branch into two new ones is still missing. To create the split, we want to take the entire setup we made, which means side branches growing from other side branches and twigs and leaves growing from the last branch level, and we want to put this whole structure twice at the end of each branch tip. So basically we will be placing the whole growth structure on itself, and this is almost like a recursive fractal pattern. For this, we need to nest the existing graph within another loop that encompasses the whole structure. When building nested repeats, you will thus want to build things from the inside to the outside. Construct the inner loops first, because this is what will be computed by Plant Factory first, and then start nesting the outside loops around these existing loops. Okay, so first I'm going to color the existing repeat nodes so that we can clearly distinguish the first loop in the graph from the second loop that we're going to add next. Okay, so let's add another repeat and insert it before the first one. And let's call this one split repeat. Now, we know that we need a next node to close a repeat. However, any other node than a repeater, be it a next node or something such as last or all but last, always refers to the closest previous repeater it can find. And when looking at our graph, the closest previous repeater to the existing next node is still the side repeat and not the split repeat. So if we were to simply connect another next node to the segment, it would still be part of the first loop and reference this repeater. So in order to tell these nodes that they should reference not the closest, but the second closest previous repeater, we use the end node to tell Plant Factory where the current loop ends. So let's add one and connect it to the segment as a new child. Nothing is happening right now because the end node itself is just a pass through node that says, hey, you know what, let's move one loop level up and anything that comes after me with iteration nodes in the graph now references the second closest previous repeater. Which means we can now simply connect another next node as the closing bracket for the new loop. Let's set the number of iterations to two and voila, the plant updated. So we are now growing five levels of branches first and then we take this entire five level growth group and grow it again on itself. So let's adjust the growth settings. I'll call the child tab split on tip and then I'll switch this to grow from the tip of the segment with subdivision surface blending and add a horl of two. Now each branch splits into two other branches with five side branching levels each at an angle of 30 degrees at the tip. Because the canopy is now really dense, I will reduce the sap curve towards the end to thin out the last splitting levels. Okay, all that's missing now is adding twigs and leaves to the last splitting level. So looking at how we did this previously, we used a last node to grow twigs on the last repeat only. We already have a growth rule in place for placing two branches as bifurcations. So we can reuse this growth rule we have and just grow twigs instead. Let's add another last node connected to the end node so that we are referencing the last level of the split branches repetitions and connect this to the twigs. For the branches and the trunk, we need to make some UV mapping adjustments. So let me load the material first. Okay. And then I will adjust the UV tiling settings. This material is going to be used by both the trunk and the branches and also the twigs, which means the UV settings must be relative to the current geometry length and radius. And this is the case with the standard mapping mode. Now I just need to play with the values until the tiling of the trunk looks good. I will keep the V-tiling at 1 and check Keep Aspect Ratio, which will let Plant Factory automatically adjust V-tiling on its own based on the use setting. Then I don't have to fiddle with the V-tiling at all. And because the tiling settings are relative values, setting this up correctly on the trunk will cause the branches to look correct too. And a slight twist helps hiding too obvious tiling. Okay, I think this works well. And that's it, our tree is fully done. With the two repeat nodes, we can now control how often the branches split at the tip and how many levels of side branches grow from each branching level. And this gives us maximum flexibility in designing the canopy growth structure parametrically without having to rewire anything in the graph.
And personally, I think that's pretty cool. Of course, you can further tweak the details and shapes of the tree to make it look better, which we didn't do for the purpose of this iteration course. So once again, just to recap, there's one golden rule to keep in mind when nesting loops. Each iteration node always refers to the closest previous repeater node it can find when going back in the graph, unless you place an end node before it, which will then make it refer back to the second closest repeater and so on and so on. So if you follow this principle, you will be able to build much more elaborate repeater structures easily. Don't be afraid to rewatch this lesson if you got lost somewhere along the way, because this is perfectly normal with nested loops. The concept really takes some getting used to, and it also took me a while to wrap my head around it. So just take it step by step, and always colorize different repeat nodes that belong together accordingly, because this helps a lot with your graph readability. In the last part of this course, we will explore the iteration endnote in a bonus lecture. Music